Elijah, have you ever failed an exam? In PA school, not yet. We've had a couple exams now. In undergrad, a lot. <laughs> you fail it, no big deal. Where you just figure out what you did wrong and just take it from there. Everybody fails one, or two, or ten. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. And I'm Elijah. I'm a first year PA student over at Rutgers. Where are you right now, man? You look like you're in jail. No, yeah, it's the apartment, man. It's um is it the wall? Is it I think the, it's the wall? Yeah, yeah, I'll move over a little. <laughs> so <you can> see <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like the exposed stone that's just like neutral colored. It, it's yes, yeah, apartment. Like the first day we moved in here, we we're like, "Whoa, this is scary." <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's just like the uh, the prison aesthetic. Yeah, and I don't have any like decorations or like paintings set up yet, so it's kind of it's not as homey yet. Yeah, that would make a difference. <laughs> you want some of mine? I'm actually moving out like in twelve hours. Yeah, send it over. <laughs> yeah, you can have that one. That'll make it a lot more homey. God, I was going to say something about jail and now I can't remember. But anyway, guys, um, so the topic of this video, <laughs> uh, the topic of this video is failing an exam in PA school as a pre-PA in undergrad. Elijah, have you ever failed an exam? In PA school, not yet. We've had a couple exams now. In undergrad, a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> likewise. Uh, except I think I did fail at least one or two in PA school. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit more context. So I graduated PA school about two years ago. Elijah's currently just getting started. Mm -hmm. He's in the midst. In the midst I'm in the midst of it. I, I've had two. I had one exam on my first day and another one recently, and I, I did really well on both. I got kind of the scores I wanted, but yeah, we, yes. <laughs> Doing good so far. I have another one in a couple days, so we'll, we'll see how the trend goes. But yeah, um, there were a couple people that have failed our first exam and thankfully it was just like the midterm exam so mm -hmm. they, it's just something they, they were they're allowed to retake yeah yeah well i mean first off what i heard was elijah's at 100 percent so far 100 percent pass rate so that's pretty damn good <laughs> thank you the second thing is this is something that like if it was drilled into your head from a young age that grades are important you got to get straight a's you'll never get into a good <laughs> school you know if you don't uh, that kind of sends shivers down your spine thinking about failing an exam. A lot of people were not raised that way like me. And it's just like, oh, whatever. It's just to see. Oh, it's just I failed it. Who cares? You know, I'm still going to graduate. And unfortunately, that kind of attitude does not get you into like top tier graduate programs like basically any PA school. Right. Uh, and then also in PA school, if you get anything below like a 70, I believe, or in my program, I think it was an 80, you're out. You know, not right away, but if you fail enough, and if I fail, it means under 80%, you're out. You're out of the program. All your hard work, all that sacrifice you got just to get in there, you're done. You're out of the program. So failing is definitely very scary to people who take their grades seriously and their career seriously. Um, so that being said, can you imagine being one of those people that your very first exam in PA school, you finally got in, your life is all making sense, you're going to be a PA, you know, making great money, great family, great whatever, and then boom, first exam failed. How does that feel? Yeah, I mean, it must be like the heartbreaking, right? Because you, you did all that, like you said, you, did, you put in all that work and you don't know, like you, you might have been applying for like three years, one one year only, but like regardless, it's it, it's a dream for most people. And, and to fail that first exam, like coming right out the gates, it's, it, it can be really scary. And yeah. uh, I'm not too sure about the students who did fail in my class, but um, I just want to let you guys know that first exam is okay. Like at least for my program, we um, it's a midterm exam. So if you fail it, you're allowed to retake it as many times as you want. But that also eats into studying time like later, right into yeah. the semester. Um, but there are some programs that will have those first like that first test to kind of like ease you into it, and that's kind of what our midterm exam did. Uh, if you fail it, like, don't worry. That just kind of, like, sets the pace for PA school because each subsequent exam, like, you're going to find your rhythm. You're going to find your groove, right? Like, that first exam in PA school is going to be, like, it's going to be super hard because you, you don't know how you want to study. You don't know how you want to manage your time. 
you just feel like you want to overload yourself that first week, right? Because all that information is coming to you. But you you really just have to. It, it's 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 really more of a test around that first exam. Like you you gotta kind of just like tread the waters and see like what like what works for you. Like for me, um, what works for me st at least studying for my first exam was I wanted to overload, right? So I wanted to overload, and then I dial it back based on how much time I wanted to spend with my family, how much time I wanted for myself. So what I did my first week was I, I actively listened during class. I made sure like whenever the the professor was like, lecturing, I, I learned as I was in class, right? Because you want to grasp things in class so you can ask things there then and there, or at least after lecture is done. And then when I went home, I went over and reviewed those slides and made sure like, okay, I, at least I have a good understanding of this topic. Let's move on to the next, mm -hmm. right? Because some of you who fail are probably like are studying the right amount, but like you're not studying the right way. Like you're just like, you're looking at all the info that's coming at you and you're not like really grasping it. You're getting overwhelmed. So just taking it day by day and just making sure like you look at the content and really like put your time and effort into understanding it. And if you don't have like, you know, if you have a lot of questions or you're not really getting anything, understanding anything, a lot of your programs will have like um, tutoring, uh, office hours with your professors. And I, I believe PA uh, professors that at least teach for the PA programs have more office hours and they're more, I guess, accessible than when you're an undergrad. Mm -hmm. So just reach out to someone, reach out to a classmate, reach out to faculty, because they're, they're there to help you. They're there to make sure that you succeed. They got you into a pro into your program, into their program, and they're not going to want like sit like idly by and watch you fail. They're going to want to push you to the next step. So uh, that's at least kind of my advice for you know your first exam, whether or not you fail or you do well. You know, it's it it's not the end of the world, even though it may feel like it, but it's more of like a way to get into the group of things. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. One thing that Elijah brought up that I really like is the fact that all of your faculty are very, very much invested in you getting through the program, you know, because they're all choosing to teach. They're all choosing to, instead of going clinical practice or management, uh, they're all choosing the education route. So their careers are very much linked to your success. Mm -hmm. And so if their program has a lot of people dropping out, failing out, that looks very bad on them. That looks bad on the program. It could be bad for the future of the program. So all of your faculty, all the way up and down the chain, you know, from the professors to the dean to everybody, they're very, very invested in your success. So if you're struggling even a little bit, don't hesitate. Ask them. They're literally there to help. That's what they're there for is to help you learn everything you need to learn, become the best new PA you could be, and to get through the program. They're very interested in you getting through. All right. So never think that it's a bother. Never think that it's like that you shouldn't talk to them. They're literally there for that reason. Okay. So very, very good point by Elijah there. Uh, the other point is, yeah, the first exam is, it's not a weed out thing. It's more of just like getting in the groove of things. If you fail it, no big deal. Readjust, figure out what you did wrong and just take it from there. Everybody fails one or two or 10. Uh, whatever the program lets you. I certainly, I'm trying to remember. I think I remediated, I remediated one exam in PA school and it was pharmacology because, ugh, pharmacology. Uh, but I've also heard of people failing the pants, you know, the physician assistant national certifying exam, the thing that you actually need to pass at the end after you've graduated to even be able to get your license and practice. I've heard of people failing that, you know, so I mean, compared to failing the pants, failing your first, you know, little trial exam is just in, in context. It's not a huge deal, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then people still they study up, they use resources, they get better and then they pass the pants on their second try or their third try. So in context, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Take it as a sign that you need to adjust a little bit and then set yourself up for success in the rest of PA school. Elijah's speechless because. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that first exam, it, it's really a big like icebreaker to mm -hmm. how it, you know, sets off the rest of your first semester. Um, I guess my, one of my biggest advice is to you want to aim high so that you have like room for mistakes. I, I, that's what I, that's how I wanted to take my first week and my first exam. And, um, so you're in PA school. Yes. And like technically if you pass, you know, you'll get through. Right. But wouldn't you want to shine? Right. Wouldn't you want to grasp as much material as you can? You want to shine. 
Yes. I love that. That's a good quote, man. <laughs> like you, 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 you want to, you, you don't want to be competent in like just knowing things. Like you want to understand things um, because now that I'm getting like this graduate level of learning, even if though it's like a topic I hate, right? Like biochem, like the way I see how things are actually tying into, you know, clinical practice or like healthcare or like science in general, like now it's like starting to interest me, right? So you want to, it's important to aim high so then you can grasp as much as you can from all these different classes you're taking your first semester so that like you have room for mistakes, right? Like for me, I want to try to get a hundred. And if I don't get it, then I missed probably a couple. And, you know, that's kind of what I did on my first two exams. Like I studied up, I made sure I knew absolutely everything. And if I didn't remember something, then it was probably because of test anxiety. And so I, I left some room for mistakes. So I ended up with like a 90%, but that's what you want to do, right? Like if, if your pass rate or if your pass condition um, is like a 70%, right? Because if you get less than that, you fail. Aim for like an 80, right? To give yourself a little bit of wiggle room or aim for aim for 100. So then it's like a lot of wiggle room. Just... Are you saying shoot for the moon so that if you fall, you land among the stars? Exactly. That's And you know what? My faculty, they they emphasize that, yeah, you just have to pass to get through. Like We're, we're going to make sure you, like we do no matter what to, you know, get you guys through, right? Because they... They really pride themselves on their high pass rate. But at the same time, do you are you really like okay with just passing? Like you wanna understand these things because as a clinician, like you're gonna wanna be able to pull knowledge back from the past and be like, oh, I remember that during med school or during PA school, sorry. Like, oh, I, re I remember that during school. Or like, oh, like these path, like how do these pathways work? Like I I the specific sciences of things. I'm gonna compare Elijah's strategy to the human body. <laughs> Ready for this? So there's a lot of redundancy in the human body, right? We have two kidneys, two lungs, our liver is way bigger than it needs to be. You only need like 8% of your liver to function fully. Uh, don't quote me on that. But you need a very small part of your liver. You only need one lung. You only need one kidney. And you can live a totally normal life. Uh, but, you know, we have two. Because if something fails, we always have another one. Or we always have more. So... What Elijah is saying is like, you never want to shoot for just barely passing. Let's say 80% is passing and you think, okay, I've learned 80% of the material. Something is always going to go wrong. Murphy's law, something will always go wrong to where it'll get you below that 80 and make you at like 78. And then you're frustrated. Damn, I only failed by 2%. Like, yeah, you only failed by 2%, but you could have studied for more than that, you know, 80%. You could have studied up to 85, 90%. And then you'd have a little bit more wiggle room for something that inevitably will go wrong. Let's say, I don't know, you zone out, you take a little more time, and now you don't have time for all the questions, or your professor like worded something in a funny way, which will happen every freaking time, or like whatever happens, like your stomach hurts that day, you're nauseous. There's every excuse under the sun that will happen. And if you don't have that little bit of wiggle room to do a little better than you really need to, you know, you're going to end up failing. So that's just one thing that I learned. Uh, because like I used to be a C, you know, B, C student kind of guy, barely scraping a 3.0 GPA. And I was thinking like, I got the gist. I know, I know enough. I got enough to like pass the test and I'm fine. And then things would happen and I wouldn't be fine. And then it's only when I started really shooting for that 4.0, trying to get into PA school, like with all my might, that I realized like, no, I need not just every point, but I need every quarter of a point. I need to be <laughs> one of those annoying people in class that's like trying to get every little possible thing. And then, you know, the, the results speak for themselves. I remember arguing with my uh, my molecular biology, no, bacteriology and immunology or something like that in my post back. And this lady was like a professor at Cornell. She was the biggest nerd on the face of the planet in the best way possible. And she's telling me like, dude, chill out. This is like half a point. And I was like, no doctor, I'm not going to call her out, but no doctor D, uh, Dr. D, I'm not going to chill out because I need this. I need this half a point. <laughs> and you know, the end, she gave it to me and whatever the rest is history. But like, you got to be that guy right now. Every point matters, you know, leisure, time with family, diet, exercise, sleep. They don't matter. All right. Get those points. That's the first, <laughs> second, third, fourth and fifth priority. After that is everything else. All right. You can sleep when you're done. That's yep. I completely agree with that. And you can handle more than you think you can. I promise. Yeah. I really like, PA school, at least the first couple of weeks, it, it really tests you, right? Really um, teaches you how to manage your time. What What's important, what's not important, you know? Going on Do Not Disturb is a big thing for me. Oh, yeah. Um, 
studying when I know I'm effective and when I'm not effective is a big thing for me. True. <laughs> and those are like just study tips that we can like give you later on in this video. But yeah, like you, you want to shoot for the stars. I mean, you, you want to be a great clinician. You want to help people in the future. You're helping people, right? You don't want to be like, I don't want to say an average provider, but you, you don't want to, you want to do the best you can now mm -hmm. to serve your patients in the future, right? Because this is for you, yes, for your career, but also you're in such an honorable like career, like to be, to have the opportunity and like the privilege to help people is such a big thing and you want to do the best for them, right? Yeah. As someone who's actually doing that, like in practice every day, I definitely will agree. Like you take it for granted, especially if you're in kind of a high paced, uh, what would you call it? Practice or field. Like I'm in urgent care right now. So like everybody who comes in, it's like, all right, get them out, get them out, get them out. Like hurry up. Uh, so you kind of lose yourself in that and you kind of don't take, uh, what am I trying to say? Not don't take advantage, but like you don't appreciate what you're actually doing for these people because to you it's 10 minute patient interaction, two minute documentation onto the next, you know, to you, it's a very small part of your day. This person you're seeing has been suffering with this for hours, days, weeks, sometimes years. And now they're free to solve it in your little 10 minute session. And sometimes you can actually do that. Sometimes it's like, all right, this is chronic. I'm sorry. I can't do much for you, but sometimes you can like, even if it's not like a medication or a procedure, it's just like a little bit of advice. Like, Hey, by the way, if you stop drinking six cups of coffee and having a bunch of carbonated things and having a bunch of spicy food, you will not be waking up 10 times a day to pee or 10 times a night to pee because you won't have overactive bladder as bad. Try to, you know, drink water. Uh, maybe if I was your primary, I could prescribe something a little bit more chronic, but I can't. But like, my point is someone who's suffering for years and years or weeks and weeks or hours and hours, you can fix that in just a little bit based on what you're learning in school right now, which is amazing. Like that's a privilege. What other career can you do that? Right. Stockbroker, like, okay, you made some money. Cool. But you didn't fix their suffering. So like, it is an amazing career. That being said, I just put a bunch of pressure on you. I, I made you like see that your career is going to be awesome, but I also put a lot of pressure on you. And I want to kind of relinquish that because in my school, my favorite professor, Dr. J had this one thing that he would say, he's like, this is important. This is important. Everything's important. <laughs> and we're like, Dr. J, like, we get it that you're very smart and you've been, you know, practicing medicine for 40 years. We can't learn all of that in one hour. I'm sorry. Like, that's too much pressure. <laughs> so I want to say that, yes, it's all important, but no, you don't have to learn all of medicine right this minute. It's impossible. Please take it one step at a time, one exam at a time, just this chunk of material. And that's, it. don't worry about all of medicine. <laughs> all right. You'll get there. I promise. But well, you'll never get there. You'll never know all of medicine, but you'll learn all these things as time goes on. Right mm -hmm. now, it's only this exam. It's only these pages in your book, this chunk of material. It's not all of it. Please take the pressure off yourself. You don't have to learn everything right now. Just this little bit, get it really good, pass your test, move on. Mm -hmm. Fair? I like it. <laughs> good, that's gonna be a short. We're gonna clip that out. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, um, so I think I forgot to say this in the beginning, but this is mostly responding to a uh, a comment I got on TikTok on the video I made that basically says, like, it feels hopeless studying. I'm tired. It's four in the morning. I don't feel like I'm learning anything. And it's just basically the messages keep going because you never know what's going to stick. So, you know, go watch that video. I'll link it in the uh, in the information for this video. But this person said, like, I really needed this. I failed this exam in PA school. I'm terrified. We're basically responding to that. It's Okay. You're not the only one who did. I failed. Elijah's failed in the past. You know, you'll get through it. You're not the only one. And I just want to, I just want to touch up on that specific like comment, right? Because that, that already provides us with so much info and like a scenario to work with. So I don't know if you want to like put it up here somewhere, like in the video, but. What's that? The comment? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The comment on TikTok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like let's sit here somewhere if you have time. It'll be like right here. Yeah. There. <laughs> and the so walking, the comment will be right here. <laughs> I don't know if it's above me. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I don't know, actually. That's going to be up to Zoom. We'll figure it out. So I, I, what you're saying provides a lot of context, right? You're sleeping at 4 a.m. You're not grasping anything. I am guilty of that. Yes, I've slept at 3 a.m., but that's because that's what works for me. I'm a night owl, right? So there's a couple, like, study tips that I'm going to give you with regards to the transparency of how I study 
if I'm feeling tired, like even slightly, and I'm reading a page over and over again, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go on my phone or I'm going to take a nap, right? Because <laughs> if you're wasting time, when, for example, you could have gotten like two hour nap or like an eight hour sleep, right? And then just wake up like refreshed. And then you're starting to grasp the knowledge like right away. That's way more efficient than trying to stay up till 4 a.m. And it's not working for you because you're, you're at that point, you might as well just be sitting like in a room and doing nothing, right? Yeah. So my advice for you is that if you're staying up till 4 a.m. and you don't work that way, get some sleep, study in the morning. I tried that for the first time for my first exam. I was like, oh gosh, I'm so tired. I was mm -hmm. just working on my lecture notes. I just finished the quiz and I still have to study for this exam. What I'm going to do now is I'm so beat and tired. I'm going to sleep. I don't know everything right now, but when I wake up, I'm going to give myself like two or three hours right before the exam and just like try to like, photographic right. memory everything like with a fresh mind and when I did that oh my god like I did so well on that exam I thought I got like a 70 but I got like a 90 <laughs> right so and the way I used to do it in college was like how you did it or how whoever posted that comment I stayed up till 4 a.m or I pulled those all-nighters right and I'm dead tired I'm dead tired I didn't get any breakfast I didn't get any sleep I'm cranky I'm running on energy drinks you're you're not gonna be at your best performance if you do that and so just get your sleep um and, and study when it works for you for me if i work better at night but if i can't work anymore i'll go to sleep like if i'm more transparent with you throughout my day most of the time throughout my day i'm like on my phone games <laughs> like i'm watching <laughs> i'm watching like youtube pa videos like oh like youtube pa videos yes youtube pa videos keep watching like what your colleagues are making but yeah i watch a lot of youtube videos to like get my mind off of it if I'm not studying um and then I really like crack down during nighttime because that that's when I feel like I'm able to retain the most but if you're the opposite if you work better during the morning or during the daytime then dial in dial in during those hours and then at nighttime shut off because you need time to shut off as well yeah I, I disagree I just <laughs> that statement because you will shut off like your body will shut you off you know, and I, I'm a proponent of reaching your limit and pushing past your limit because you never know what your limit is. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, it depends how smart you are. You know, I I don't think that I'm very, very smart. I don't learn things quickly. Like, I feel like I was definitely one of the dumber people in PA school, or at least one of the people who wasn't as, like, apt to grasp a lot of information quickly. I also wasn't on Adderall, and almost everybody was. Uh, yeah. so that. <laughs> but that being said, uh, my opinions on Adderall. But that being said, like, I don't know. I, I think that you would be better off using these rare opportunities in life, like graduate school or like your first job or like anything that's extra difficult to see what your limit is mm -hmm. and push past it. Like, I'm so exhausted. I'm reading the same page. I don't feel like learning anything, just like that video said. And then like, you just keep doing it with faith saying like, all right, I know my brain's working. I know it's in there somewhere. I don't feel like I'm retaining but I know that somewhere deep inside I am. And then boom, you get a 90 something on the exam when you don't feel like you know anything. It's like, wait, how did I do that? And then you start to have more confidence uh, in your ability to learn and study and know things. But that's also just like me and my bias. That was a huge life-changing moment for me. So I don't know if that's like all the stars lined up and like for whatever reason, my brain was retaining that hour at 4 a.m. You know, and like this is, this is a lot of like inside kind of information. It's, if you've seen that video, it's not gonna make sense. But the point is, do what works for you, you know, and do more than you think you can, because PA school is going to push you. And it pushes everyone. It's not just you. It's it's hard for everybody. I promise. You know, it's funny. It's when you said that, like, oh, I remember this during this hour because I was so exhausted. That actually happened to me on my first exam. I was like, oh, my gosh, I remember this question because I was stuck on it for like, I was stuck on this topic for like half an hour. <laughs> and I just wasn't grasping it. But for some reason, it came back to me during the test. So yeah yeah like there's, there's some like parts of that like i agree with you like mm -hmm. pushing yourself because you you are a sponge like like you you will retain as much information as you can and then when the test happens like sometimes you're just able to like, just split it spit it out yeah well and also the more you learn the more it's like easy to learn mm -hmm. well, my uh my favorite professor like i keep mentioning dr j he called it building a lattice it's like uh like an not an exoskeleton it's like an endoskeleton it's like the structure of your knowledge like right now you might be a pre-med, you might be a biochem major, you think you know some stuff, you don't know anything about medicine, really. 
Uh, you haven't really learned medicine at a high rate, unless you're like a foreign medical grad or, you know, or you were a nurse for years or something. But like, you don't have that like provider's medical knowledge yet. And everything just seems overwhelming. But once you start to learn a few different disease processes, how a clinician thinks about them, how the exam, like the physical exam ties in, your treatment options, and you see that over and over again for different things, that's when you start kind of building that structure and then learning more disease processes and treatment plans just kind of like add on top of that. And it's a lot easier. You know, some things are totally different, but some things it's like, oh, I see how we're thinking about chest pain in this regard. Well, maybe kind of we're thinking about belly pain a little bit similar. And this is like, it's totally different diseases, but we're thinking about it similarly. And it's like, I've seen this before. I thought about it this way before. And now it's just stacking new facts on a lot of old facts instead of just like overwhelmed, just trying to learn everything. You exactly. Know, makes sense. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, basically. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but anyway, on this topic, any last thoughts here before we move on to the next? Um, There's different ways to approach it. Like me and Boris have mentioned Boris. Is very hardworking at it. <laughs> I'm more of like a, I don't know if it's because I'm still like fresh, but I'm more of like a if do what fits for you kind of guy, like wellness. But at the same time, whether or not you agree with me or boys, you, it is work. You have to put in work, right? It's a job. What this is, is your job. This is your life. Yeah. <laughs> you you gotta you gotta push yourself now because yeah. If you don't push yourself now, then when, right? Yeah, if you're not pushing yourself in PA school, either you're extraordinarily smart yes, or, or you're going to fail. Like, I don't know. There was extraordinarily smart people, like the kinds of people that sat in front of the class and got straight A's since they were like in kindergarten. There was those people, and I saw them working their butts off. And then there was people who were literally physicians, like trained physicians from different countries, and they were working their butts off. PA school is hard no matter who you are or what you're doing. So you're not alone. It's hard, and you're going to have to just put in a lot of hard work. Yep. And we're here to support you and cheer you on from the sidelines. Yep. If you have any questions, just like comment. comment. Yeah, man, man, are here for you, man. We're very engaged with the community. We love helping. We love getting success stories, you know. And so we're we're very happy to to help you out and cheer you on because we believe in you. Mm -hmm. The end. The end. You guys got this, man. It's PA. Guys, it's just PA school. Come on, yeah, guys. it's just PA. <laughs> no big. We've all been there. <laughs> you know, it's only like the top 1% of the 1% get in. And, you know, most people do end up passing, but like, yeah, you guys got it. Believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. You got this. If you're, if you're in, you're in for a reason. You totally can do it and you will. But yeah. Anyway, next video topic.